that last song, yes, Lord, yes. How many of us will still say yes when the trials and tests amped up a little bit more? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We know that God is still good. Amen. Amen. Even when it gets real rough, we can stand the test if we hold on to God and change man. And this morning I'm going to um, just exhort you a little bit on Abraham's faith. How the Lord God called Abraham out from among his people and told him to separate yourself and come and be perfect like me. And many are thinking, how can I be perfect like God? He's, no, God wants us to be like him. He will make a way for us to be perfect. And he has sent us his only begotten son to teach us how to be perfect. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm going to start off here with Abraham. Uh, a reading at Genesis 22. Let's, let's read a little bit of that. Then I'm going to go to James chapter 2. I think it's verse uh, 21. It says, Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am, Lord, here I am. He said, Take now your son, your only son, the one that Abraham wanted all his years. The Lord has visited Abraham at age 90 and told him that I'm going to bless you with a son, but it, your son is going to come through Sarah. Nobody else, but but uh, between the 90 and the 100 years, Sarah could not wait. She wanted that. She was. She wanted that child. She wanted that son. You know what I mean? And she, and, 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 and she. Uh, I looked at him and said, "Listen, Abraham, the Lord is taking too long now. I think He's taking too long. <laughs> my, I'm wearing out. Although we say yes, my patience is wearing out." Uh, you just uh, go ahead and, you know, get your handmaiden and make us a child. And we know what I went wrong because he could not wait on God. But listen, when God promised something, it will come to pass. Amen. God will give us the strength and the endurance for it to come to pass. Eh? Amen? Amen? And he said, take your only son, your only son whom you love. God wants something that you love. Amen. He wants something that you love to come and sacrifice to him. Isaac. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Obedience. Amen. Man listened to the word of God and follow it. Amen. He didn't say if, when, and but. He just obey God. And that's the key there. Obeying God is the key thing. Amen. Amen. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said, to his young men, stay here with the, with the donkey. And I and the lad will go over there and we will worship and return to you. That's faith. Yeah. Abram says in one verse, I know if I, if I give my son, God going to raise him up. Mm -hmm. We got to know that God will fulfill his part of the bargain. Yeah. Yes, he will. Right. Yes. But we got to show God that, Lord, your word is, is, is the head of my life. Your word is the center of my life. And it's your word I live and move and walk and have my being. Lord, I got to obey him. So Abraham obeyed him. And in, I think, in Romans chapter 4, it talked about, oh, Abraham was not weak in faith, but he was strong in faith, fully persuaded God was able to fulfill that. That which he had promised to him. Now let's go to um, James chapter 2, verse 21. I'm going to read that. 
It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar. This is what I like. He said, you see that faith was working. See, faith is a working process. Mm -hmm. It was working. With Abraham works. See, faith will come to pass. God's word will never fail. God's word is perfect. It will come to pass. If we will only trust Him, if we, if we will only hope in Him, if we will only apply the Word of God to our life, it will come to pass. You see that faith was working. Faith was working, working, was turning. The wheel of faith was turning with His work. And as a, as a result, faith as a result, the work of faith, faith was perfected. Look at that. Because Abraham obeyed God, his faith was become perfect. His work was perfect before God. And that's all and that is all God wants us to do is to be faithful to him. And he promised to see us through. And may the Lord God bless you. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That verse verse 22, you see that faith was working with his works. Yeah. And as a result of the works not a result of the faith. As a result of the works, faith was perfected. Faith without works is dead. That's what he's teaching us in this passage. But right. faith that is coupled with action, that is what completes and perfects our faith. And I, it's interesting to me, verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness and he was called the friend of God. I, I, when we hear, when we quote that statement all the time, we hear it quoted, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. But it wasn't just faith That's right. that caused Abraham right. to be the friend of God. It was faith coupled with obedience, right. faith coupled with works. That, and, and that faith coupled with works, then God deemed that to be righteous. I think sometimes we can think that if we just have faith, that that's, that's what God is looking for. That's righteous. But what God deems as righteous is faith. When while we're working towards the manifestation of that faith being fulfilled, so it's easy to say I believe. Yeah, that's true. But you don't really believe unless you're doing something to back up what you're saying you believe in. And then God, when He sees faith and works combined together, then God blesses and anoints that and moves. He counts it as righteousness towards you. Amen. It's a powerful statement. Yeah, it's faith. When you're not working towards the manifestation of what you're believing in, that faith is useless. Amen. Faith that is not coupled with works is not faith at all. It's not worth anything. That's right. That's 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 a powerful re revelation. Because you see many people talking about, well, I believe God's gonna yeah. God's gonna turn my life around. God's gonna turn my marriage around. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. That's the key. You, you can have faith all day, but what are you doing? What works are you putting into this? Because because righteousness is faith plus works. Mm -hmm. And when God sees that righteousness of faith coupled with works, then He moves in. Then He blesses. Then He makes a way. So we can't just say we have faith in word only. We got to have faith in works. In fact, you don't even have to say it. Do it. Was a play, yeah. Right. That's what God's really looking for is the action, not the words. The action. Everybody confess what you believe. Believe and confess. You need to believe and do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> believe and get to work. Get busy. Believe and take some action. That's right. That's what God's looking for. Amen. Amen. As you were saying there about the action, it, 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 it um, kind of reminded me of this um, this woman for 12 years had an issue, issue of blood. She had a blood problem. And she sought out many uh, physicians because she was tired of being sick for 12 years. Pain. Excuse me, pain. And she heard a word. She heard words that that there was a healer in town, that the Lord Jesus Christ was in town. 
and she made up her mind. And in those days, can you imagine, all around him, all around Christ was men. And they had a long road in those days. And their feet was all dusty. This woman not supposed to be in the midst of these men or among the people with that issue. She had a bad issue where she should have been cast, cast aside. But when she heard the word of faith, she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. Now she had to do some work. Right. The Lord was in the midst of the crowd. Okay? And she was on the outside. Now she says, if I can but just touch his hand. Now she had to get down on her knees among some nasty feet, some dusty feet, and search for the hem of Jesus' garment. Mm -hmm. To touch that garment by faith. Because that's what she believed. If I could just touch his hand. She get a working. She get on her knees and start to search for that garment. She must have go, look, here is his head. I got to line him up. Then I'm going to go to work. Then I'm going to go for his garment. And because of that, she was made whole. She had to have works to her faith. Mm -hmm. She said, I can just touch. She didn't just stand by and say, if I could just touch uh, about my word. I, no, she went search of his garment. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, who touched me? I felt virtue. And he, uh, I turned around and said, by your faith, you'll be made whole. Yeah. The brothers... We're standing around Wednesday night after service, and we were talking about that same, that same example of the woman with the issue yeah. of blood. Mm -hmm. And we we talked about how that you know Jesus is being pressed by a multitude, and she she comes in and by faith touches the hem of his garment, and then he all of a sudden stops everybody and asks that question, "Who touched me?" And the disciples look at him and say. Have you lost your mind? You're being thronged by multitudes. We're basically being stampeded here. You're being touched by everybody. And you're going to ask, who touched me? But the, the dynamic that interests me the most in this, that, that, that instance was Jesus did not make a conscious choice to heal that woman. That's right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that come in contact with Jesus, he has interaction, he has dialogue with them. He makes a conscious choice, I'm going to heal this person. And then he tells them, go wash in the pool of Siloam or uh, go show yourself to the priest if you're a leper. He made a conscious choice to heal those people. In this situation, Jesus never made a conscious choice. That's right. This woman got healed and Jesus never even knew about it until after it was done. Hmm. When, he, when she touched his garment, he, he perceived that virtue went out of him. That's right. He didn't make a conscious choice to impart healing virtue. She automatically, without him even being aware of it, had such faith that it pulled out of him what she needed and he didn't even... He didn't even know it until after the fact. Yeah. That's a powerful statement. Yeah. That's why Jesus says so many times when He's healing people, He says, according to your faith, faith. shall it be. Right. Like, this is not even about me. It's not my level of power that's going to decide whether right. you get healed or not. Amen. According to your faith, shall it be done unto you. Mm. And I, I can find no greater example of that than this woman with the issue of blood when it proves what Jesus is saying. It's not even about Jesus making a conscious effort. It's literally your faith is requiring that God, God's power manifest itself yeah. in your life. That's, but what did she do? She had faith, but she also worked towards it. She moved in faith. She acted in faith. And acting in faith got her healing, and Jesus never made a conscious decision to heal her or not. He never decided was she worthy. Her faith and her action together, just the nature of it caused God's power to manifest itself in her life. That's, that's a powerful... Because a lot of times we're... Let's make it practical, okay? A lot of times we're praying and we're asking God, God, I need you to do this. I need you to move in my situation. I need this. I need that. Right. And we're, we're, we're asking God as if it's a conscious choice that God has to make in order for us to get what we need. Right. And it's not a conscious choice. He has so set up in the spiritual realm that there is a law. Yeah. 
that when faith and action come together, yeah. it happens. There's no conscious choice being made by God. That's the, that's the exact point that James is teaching in James chapter 2 that Elder Waldron read to us this morning. It's that powerful. Faith, not faith alone. Right? That's where people are missing it. They think faith alone causes this to happen. It's not faith alone. It's faith plus works. Right. We work together, yeah. And that combination is, is a law that God has said, I'm going to honor when men put their faith with their works. I'm going to automatically honor that. Mm. Right? And it applies to every aspect of life. You're talking about healing, spiritual things, miracles, things of that nature, but it also finances. Yes. How many times have you seen people sit around That's talking right. about, God, I need you to bless my finances, but you won't quit spending. Uh -oh. <laughs> you, won't, you won't stick to a budget. <laughs> but faith coupled with action works. Doing Moving towards what it is, pressing your way towards what goal it is that you want to achieve. God, God anoints that. That's right. That's a, that's a law. Whatsoever a man sows, not what, whatever a man believes, right. whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Right. That's the law of the harvest. Faith to believe, if I sow, I'm going to reap. Then you actually have to go out and... So, you have to cultivate the ground. You have to water the seed. You have to be patient throughout the process. And then the, the law of the harvest takes place in our lives. We can't just believe. That's my point this morning. We can't just believe. We've got to work towards these things. That's so powerful. Yes, sir. You could do no mighty miracle there because of unbelief. That's yeah. Let that, that dynamic is powerful to me too because you have Jesus Christ who is the manifestation of God's power on the earth. It wasn't that they didn't have power. Didn't believe it. Right? It never works. The, the most powerful human being who has ever walked the earth was standing in their midst. But even he couldn't do it because they lacked faith. So we can be in the presence of God. We can have access to God. But it's our faith coupled with God's power that produces. God cannot work outside of faith. That's right. He limits Himself to not work outside of faith. The Hebrews chapter 11 talks about without faith it is impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. It's that faith is so powerful. Man, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all something I read a while back that, that has always stuck in my mind. It's a, man, it's, it's crazy to me. All right, there was a medical study done um, a few years back where there were people, they had three different classes of people, and I'm going to try to remember the details of the, 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 the medical study here. They had three different people who were, three different classes of people, groups of people who were having pain in their knee. One, one group of people, they gave uh, a, a placebo pill to, a sugar pill, and told the people, this is a new drug, this drug is going to take your pain away. Those people took that sugar pill, and a great number of them, I forget the exact amount, the exact percentage, but a great number of them saw major improvement in their knee, taking a sugar pill, faith. Right? They believed that, that that pill was going to cause them to get better. And that faith, God honored faith. It wasn't even in Him. And He honored faith. Right? Alright, the rest of the study, the other groups of people, the, the, that was the first group that gave them medication. Second group was... They, they gave them surgery. They actually went in and, and surgically repaired their knees. Obviously, the, those people saw great improvements. The third group was a group that they told them they were performing surgery, took them in the operating room, cut them open, and sewed them right back up and never touched anything in their knee. 67% of people who went in that group saw improvement in their knee in the next few months, just like as if they had had actual surgery. Wow. Hmm? <laughs> That's amazing.
That's powerful. Yes. What is that though? That's that's faith. Those people believed that they had gone through an experience that caused them to, to their bodies actually responded and healed itself because of faith. And then you think of Jesus' statements, your faith has made you whole. Faith is powerful. What we believe is important. Having no belief, no faith, it, it gets us nowhere. Right? Faith is powerful. I thought that interesting. So what's going on in your life right now? Let's make it that practical. What's going on in your life as an individual in which you need God to move in a situation? Right? Do you, first off, do you have belief? Do you have faith that God is going to move in my situation? Not hope. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, I hope He will. We've got we to gotta bump it up to the level of yeah. faith. Right? <laughs> hope is good. And sometimes God moves upon us out of His mercy when we just have hope. Right? But faith is on a different level. Faith is actually believing God is absolutely going to move. Yes, right. Right? So you've got to have faith. But what else? What do you need to be doing with your faith? Once you make that statement out of your mouth or in your mind, you make that statement, I believe God is going to move in my situation. Then how do you, you immediately have to follow that up yes, right. with action. Works, yeah. What do you need to do? To start working towards what it is you're believing God for. Don't just sit back and pray prayers and ask a miss. Yeah, you got to work, labor, add works to your faith. So what do you need to do? We need to put some, some thought into that. Spend some time thinking what actions do I need to take in order to get God's glory and anointing and power to manifest itself in my life. So good. It is. I, Paul Amen. described that this way: the fight of faith. Good I have yeah. fought the good the fight, fight of faith. faith. Yeah. That's man, because it is. It is. We have to fight to make ourselves choose to believe, in spite of circumstances, in spite of what reality is telling us. Because thoughts can change reality. I, I, yes. Yeah, I feel like I've proven that over and over yeah. again in my, in my own life. Amen. Thoughts can change reality, ultimately. Thoughts become emotions, emotions become actions, actions become outcomes. But a lot of that is what I'm doing. Right. See, why most people don't ever see the miraculous hand of God or the favor of God come into their life is because they sit back waiting on God to do everything. That's right. and, and He doesn't do that, don't that right? He, he waits for somebody to sow a seed, right? How are you going to reap a harvest if you don't? So a seed. I can go out here and look at the middle of the yard and say, you know, I'm, I believe God for an oak tree right out there in the middle of that yard, and go out there every day and stare at the ground. I believe God for an oak tree. God's gonna, God's gonna work. God said He'd work. No oak tree's coming up until I plant an acorn in the ground, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when we make faith something mystical, and it's not mystical, it's practical. Faith is practical. When I believe God for something, I have to work towards it. That's right. Right? And it's that faith coupled with works that God anoints and makes prosperous. It's exactly how God fused this dynamic. Yeah. You don't learn anything when you don't do anything. So if you sit back and let God do everything in your life, we never learn anything. I mean, the concept of parent child, like if you do everything for your child, yeah. they never learn anything. And you show them so that they can eventually do it on their own and reap that reward. So we have to do something yep. with God so that we are we're learning as well. My 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 purpose for being a parent is to prepare my children right. for to live their own lives. Yeah. That's why God created that we have that structure of parent and child. The parent prepares the child to live its own life. If I don't prepare my children to do things for themselves, I've failed miserably as a parent. If they're 30 years old and they're still looking to me, right? That's a problem. So if God, if we, being evil, 
know, to do. know how to give good gifts to our children. If we understand that concept, how much more does our Heavenly Father understand that same concept? He's not going to do it for you. That's right. He, you, may get, you may get messed up sometimes and mercy steps in and God does some things for you. That, and that's great. Thank God for His mercy and His grace. Amen. But by, by default mode, God does not operate that way. He's looking to teach you how to overcome yourself. He's looking to not deliver you from all of your mess ups, but to teach you how to quit messing up. Right? And, and if we understand that concept, how much more God, who has so much more wisdom than we do? That's exactly how He's operating. It's exactly how He views the, our situations. I was thinking this when uh, something Brother Devin was saying earlier, but when the thought comes to mind, having the thought is not faith, but choosing to believe the thought. That's faith. That's the difference. We can't just think, well, I think God's going to move this. and I, That's hope, right? That's, that's not faith. That's hope. But faith is the thought comes to, you know what? God can miraculously right now begin to work out this situation. And then when you make a conscious choice to choose to believe that thought, now it's become faith. Yeah, that's what I feel like maybe you're saying in your example. Uh, I got one more faith to talk about. I think. I thank him for faith, man. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, this thing was not done in a corner. <laughs> God has not left us without a witness how faith works. The Bible shows how nice we to take that and run with it. I'm looking at Luke chapter 5 and 17. The man with the palsy. And this one moved me too. He said, one day... He was teaching and there was some uh, Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every a village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. It is great teachers, worthy, worthy people, full of knowledge, but as no faith. <laughs> Knowledge alone is not, you know, it's not faith. Mm -hmm. And some men were carrying on a bed a man who was who was uh, paralyzed. And they were trying to bring him in and set him down in front of him. Now the house in those days had sealed roof, slab of uh, concrete. And at, and at this side of the house uh, there were steps that goes up these four men had to go up the side of the house take the man inside the, the house they had to tear up the roof and let this man for oh, Jesus listen to me uh, uh, let me read it uh, but nothing finding any way to bring him before no, not before because of the crowd because of the press they could not they could not get through the front door nor the back door they had to go to the roof your faith would i mean if you really want something from god your faith would take you to another level so these guys went up to the side of the house but not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd they went up the roof and let him down through the tile now can you make these men at the, use the hand to dig up that tile your hands are so blistered a grip with a hard tile, hot day. Yeah. Huh? Day that's hot. But not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd. They went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher. What a lot of work. <laughs> Can you believe that? I, we are taking a man who's paralyzed. He may win a hundred and uh, 50 or, or more pound up a stairs like this going up on a roof to get this man healed because we're sick of that sick of that this man walking around asking for help all the time we gonna get him help these men must have said let's man let us 
let us come together and help this man get healing. So they, they, they uh, took this man on the roof and let him down before Jesus Christ. Look what he said here. Seeing, now let me go back. I said, but not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tower, which is with his stretcher. In the middle of the crowd, in front of Jesus. This man, I mean, right in front. <laughs> and they must have gone, let me size him up, up from outside. Let's see what he said. We want a man in front of Jesus Christ. We want him to see our faith. We want to see our work. We be working on. Seeing your faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Yeah. He came for getting healing, but the problem is sin too. So the Lord blessed him with twofold. Healing and his sin was gone. <laughs> the scribe and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemy? Who can uh, forgive sin but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their reasoning, answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning your heart? Which is easy to say, Your sin has been forgiven you. Or to say, get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. He said to the party, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. I mean, faith sometimes, we have to work very hard to get to God. It's going to take some pain sometimes. Not going to be easy to get to God. Sometimes we have to make our mind to work, get a work, get busy. Because I'm sick and tired, I'm sick and tired of being sick. I'm sick and tired, I'm sick about going all this problem and this trouble. And I got to get to God. I got to seek Him out. Without, you know, you know any, anyone that come to God and said He will live five, we got to seek Him. And while we're seeking Him, He's making a way also. And God promised to bless them that work their faith out. Amen. You know, Solomon tells, go to the go to the ant, thou sluggard. sluggard. <laughs> if you struggle with laziness, yes. you need to learn something from the ants. Work. They're constantly working, constantly <laughs> moving, yeah. constantly storing up and working towards mm -hmm. their goal and what they need. That's how we've got to be. That's the mentality we've got to adopt. Not sit back and, if an ant just sat in a hole and waited for yeah. And food and provision yeah. and shelter, it would it doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what I understand about ants is they were in unity too. If one was to leave the hole and come on and see food, he would run back and get a whole group to grab it. Everybody come to get a drag it back to the hole. <laughs> they worked as a team, man. And they're strong for their size. They're moving it. We can move mountain too. We're strong too. But our strength is the Holy Ghost on the inside, the Spirit of God, to move mountains. By our faith, we can move mountains. That's what the Lord said. Our faith can move mountains, saints. God says so. And if He says so, we can do it. <laughs> that's, that's a tremendous point, too, about faith is, you know, talking about the ants that come together and work together. Faith multiplies when two people come together believing the same thing. Right? Jesus teaches that. If, if two of you would come together touching and agreeing, believing that same thing, that He would move in that situation. So faith is not only powerful from an individual perspective, but if we can get other people believing the same thing with us. Not just hoping, but faith coming together. God honors that. I'm telling you, there's, yeah. there's a. Uh, I need to find a good way to describe this, but God has set up in, in spiritual laws, just like natural laws. When these things come together, that's what releases His power yeah. and His favor and His grace and His mercy. Even to people who don't even believe in Him, mm. these laws still apply to their lives. Mm. If the atheist goes out and sows a seed into the ground, he's going to reap corn. He doesn't have to believe in God. There are laws yeah, the that God has instituted. Yeah, the law of the harvest. Right? So you agree? 
Yeah, but how much more for His children who believe in Him and are working towards His purposes? How much more is God going to release divine grace and prosperity for those who sow in faith in Him? Mm. Powerful. And God loves faith. He loves it. Mm -hmm. Because that did come from Him. So He loves it, man. When He sees that man... He go crazy. Let me say, I want you that way, go crazy. I mean, he goes out for you. He'll move mountains for you when he see your faith. When he see our faith, he'll move anything out of the way. He'll, he'll bless you instantly. And, and there, there are many a time, he has allowed you to be, you know, uh, you are uh, to uh, discipline your own self too. Because you're in a hurry to get things done when when it's not the right time for you, he he will he will also cause you to wait a little bit before he blesses. But his blessing is coming. But it's something on my part that I need to get right before he moves. Mm -hmm. So I gotta get me right mm -hmm. for God to move. Yes. Yeah, and you're sowing you're sowing new seeds of faith into their hearts and their minds that hopefully those seeds by your words will take root and, and grow up and continue to grow until they can manifest great faith. Faith is contagious. Doubt's contagious. But faith is contagious too. You ever been in a, a situation where everybody's speaking doubt and criticism yeah. and worry and yeah. man, it's, it's like a cancer. It is cancer. Yeah, for real. But faith is the same way. We, yeah. can, we can be I'm trying to think of the right word here, but imparting faith to other people that we come in contact with, constantly speaking faith. Um, listen, and I, I want to be clear here, I'm not, if somebody comes in and, and they're ignoring reality, I don't, I can't rock with that. Like, have you ever, somebody comes in and they're just straight ignoring or what? Listen, snot running down, I'll get you give you an example. Snot running down their nose and they're talking about, I'm not receiving this cold. In Jesus' name. Yeah, it don't make no like, sense. That don't make no sense. You already received it. <laughs> you got it. It's, it's there. It's, it's, you can ignore it all you want to, but reality is that's what you're dealing with. You hear yeah. craziness like that. And they call that faith. That's not faith. That's ignorance. That's fine. Like you're literally ignoring reality and calling it faith. Faith doesn't ignore reality. Faith accepts reality. It is what it is. I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with, but I believe that can change. Change, yeah. Right in the future, that's faith. <laughs> so when I'm talking about imparting faith, I'm not. Don't run around not accepting. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't receive this flat tire in Jesus' name. You, you got a flat <laughs> tire. It. Receive fix it or not, you can fix it. Right? <laughs> fix it exactly. Yeah. Can't go fix itself. Crazy. Listen, uh, uh, what you saying is true. I've heard uh, um, people say they have great faith. Uh, when I look. I, you know, I look at them and say, well, I struggle with architecture. You go, man, what's wrong? What's wrong? Man, you get it like that. So we... <laughs> no, that's not faith. You, you, you can't say that. You ignore that stuff. <laughs> but I'm glad I know I got a problem that God can fix. <laughs> yeah, for real. If I'm going to lie to myself, well, I'm all right. No, die lie to myself. Be honest with God. God wants to be honest with him. Lord. <laughs> and they say I got this, but what you say can fix this. Right. You can move on my behalf. Because mm -hmm. we, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And we're going to sick. It is appointed unto man once to die. What is sickness? A part of death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, the, it's, it's, it's real thing. What's happened to us? The headache, the pain, the suffering, and some of it we cause the pain of the summer, but some of the stuff just naturally, you know, you come our way. But if we if we trust God and put our faith and works in God, He'll move. He said, if we have faith like a grain of mustard seed, we can move mountain. You know how small a mustard seed is. It, it, it is one of the smallest seed on the earth. But it says your faith will grow. Yeah. Like a tree 
-hmm. where people come and trust it because their faith has grown. Our faith is supposed to grow. Last year, faith. This year is supposed to be too good. Another level, our faith was stepping up. If we're not growing in faith, we're not growing. God expects us to grow from faith to faith. Our faith was increasing, man. We grow like crazy. Grow like crazy. Our faith will be growing. But if we're not growing in faith, we're decreasing there. So our faith has got to grow day by day as we trust God. Because God is perfect. He wants our faith to become perfect like his. So we got to keep growing. Amen. Amen. We, we run from things that God's trying to teach us to overcome. Right. Right. And we're trying to ignore them and act like they're not there. And we're never going to overcome them mm. until we accept the fact this is real. Yeah. This is what I'm dealing with. That's right. And ignoring it. It's like the little kid, you know, that had scared of the monster under their bed and they closed their eyes. It's like if I, it's like if I just ignore it, he's not there. Like but we laugh at that. But we do the same thing spiritually, mentally, emotionally. If I just ignore it, it'll go away. It's not going away. It's only going to get worse. And, and God, from His wisdom, from His perspective, is like, this thing is in your life. If you quit playing childish games right. and ignoring it, I could teach you how to actually deal with this. How to fix it. I'll give you some wisdom for how to overcome this. And, and to see things from God's perspective is, yes, freeing is a very, very good way to describe that. Absolutely. Yeah, be honest. Be honest with yourself. Absolutely. You see, it, even in the scripture, I've never read where uh, the Lord told a group of people, it's not real, it's only, you know, you'll be alright. No, I said, your faith may go. You know, because you know they got a problem. Right. I got a problem, you got a problem. Right. You accept that. You know, but when you're going to say, well, I'm alright, it's not real, you know. You can over. Jesus never says to the people, you're okay, forget it, it's not faith. Mm. I'm sick, I need help. Right. Lord heal me. There's some people gonna say, "Well, that's lack of faith." No, it's not. That's the truth. I'm sick. Only Jesus can heal me. That's my faith is Lord heal me. Yeah. It's making you stronger. Yes. <laughs> that's a whole different. That's a whole different level. I, you can have all the faith in the world and put works with your faith, but nothing trumps the sovereignty of God. Nothing. If, if God decides this is what you need in order for you to be saved, you have to deal with this situation. You can have faith. You can ignore it. You can embrace it. You can fast till your belly button falls off. It's not going anywhere because God has decided this is what you need in your life in order to help you become who it is that I need you to become. So I, I think a lot of people struggle with that aspect too. We're talking about faith. But what if I have faith and God doesn't move? Then we've got to have the wisdom to accept the sovereignty of God. Like we keep beating our head against the wall and... God has put this in your life for you to embrace it, to accept it, to learn from it, to overcome. To, and sometimes overcoming is not necessarily defeating it. Sometimes overcoming is being able to live with this thing and it not affect you. To still have these circumstances in your life, yet you're at peace and you're at joy and you have righteousness. Right? Because what's, what's greater? For God to remove every barrier out of your life? Or for you to have such a peace in Him and achieve such a spiritual maturity in Him that literally no circumstance in your life can rob your joy from you? Right? That's exactly what He's doing with Paul. Paul says, take this away from me. And God says, no, I'm not. My grace is sufficient for you. Where you're weak, then my strength begins to come. So now Paul is able to live with the physical eye condition that he's praying for God to heal him from, Paul is able to live with that, yet still retain his joy. So now Paul's living an abundant life. And everybody else thinks Paul's suffering because he has a physical sickness, but the physical sickness is actually what taught him to have joy in spite of circumstances. That's right. That's, that's so much bigger, but that's the mind of God versus the mind of men. That's right. Mind of men wants to remove everything. Mind of God is wants to add, add, add joy in spite of. Right. What's going on in this world? Um, I mean, anytime I'm feeling sick, and I'll 
I go to the doctor. I go to the doctor for one reason, to know what's wrong with me. <laughs> then I can take it to Jesus Christ, <laughs> come and get my healing. That's all I do things. I don't know what's in there. I, don't know, I can't see this, see this body. But when I go to the doctor, it says, well, you know, I'm Mr. Walter, you got this problem, you got that problem. Okay, thank you. I'm also, <laughs> I don't even, you see, and sometimes I don't even take the medication. Thank you for the diagnosis. I come, I come here and I come up and I seek God and I pray, say, Lord, this was from my body. I know you're looking to heal me. I says, Lord, you know that the drugs are good, it's bad side effects, Lord. I need your help. I'm depending on you, Lord. So, many times I get healed that way. But sometimes I have to take the drug for a little bit of while until the Lord God fix me. Listen, be honest with God. Yeah. Come get your prayer. See God. He promised to heal and deliver and bless you. He is going to save you. But well, through your trials and through your tests, you shall be saved. But you got to endure to the end. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's good, brother. I've, I've heard you talk about stuff like that in the past. But see, what you do is, after you leave the doctor and you pray about things, I've heard you talk about certain foods and things that you don't, you don't eat. You change. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I used, to, I used to pray, Lord, I want more faith. But it's like, what is it, Titus 1.16 talks about they profess to know God, but, with their, but they don't do it with their deeds. Mm-hmm. If you want to increase your faith, it's got to be more than saying, Lord, increase my faith. Sure, yeah. But you've got to put Works. some work with yeah, it. Right, you gotta, yeah. And, and you've got to change things um, uh, in order to grow your faith. I mean, faith just don't grow. <laughs> you know, what the hell? <laughs> With that, you know, you get that diagnosis from the doctor, but when you leave, you you you, you pray and you ask God to lead and guide you, and you make changes in your diet, right. or you exercise, or you do whatever you need to do to to make those changes. And then when you see improvements, your faith gets increased. Um, man, yeah, you gotta you gotta practice your faith for sure. Exercise your faith. Yeah, that faith can't be a uh, an excuse to be lazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's yeah. how many people are using it. Is well, I got faith in God. God's going to deliver. You need to change some stuff, man. Cool. Make some changes. Put forth some action. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, you're not you're not full of faith. You're full of laziness. <laughs> yeah. I'm just full full of you're kind of you're kind of looking at it in a, a, a practical way. You know, it's just like my job, for example. You know, next Friday I'm going to get a paycheck. I know I'm going to get a paycheck because I just put in a couple of weeks worth of work. Right. You know, so I, I got faith that a paycheck. Is coming. If I don't get that paycheck, then we got some other problems. We got to, you know. But I mean, it's based on I know what I have done. Right. So now I'm expecting. Yeah. You know, That's you know, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, you know, uh, uh, whoever loves this life will lose it, but whoever yeah. would take up his cross, yeah. deny self, and follow him, will have eternal life. And, and and it also talks about was it uh, Matthew twenty four, Jesus is coming back in the glo- in the glory of his Father, to reward the deeds of those that follow him. He's going to reward you according to your deeds. That's right, it works. It's not enough, to, man. You got to practice faith, and the more you practice it, the stronger it gets. And then it just becomes, I mean, it just becomes natural just just to react and be faithful to God. The paycheck analogy is very good. I like that. I'm not what that's, when, once I've done what I know I'm supposed to do, yeah. then I can look right forward to the, the payment for that. Right. And it, the verse came to mind while you were while you were saying that. Now faith is the assurance of that's things right. hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And then verse two: For by it, for by faith, the men of old gained approval. That's right. So like yeah. when you when you're doing things, when you're putting forth works, when you're putting Putting forth efforts, the, the boss is watching, the father is watching. Yeah. And when you've worked your hours, when you've done made the changes that need to be made, and he's like, now the payment is gonna come. And so you gain approval from from God by doing things towards yeah, faith. Yeah. And I also see as to this way too, I just thinking about it. It comes out to me that faith is like going to the gym and lifting weights and put some muscle up, mm-hmm. you'll see your body increase. Yeah. That's faith to increase yeah. you. Because when I start lifting weights, I look I'm still chronic. He doesn't know muscle. <laughs> so I know it takes patience to get that faith. It's growing. 
Because it's not, I started feeling my shirt from the tide. I said, yeah, faith is growing. I'm going to lose some more weight. I'll get my faith stronger. <laughs> this is a process. It good. is. <laughs> so my faith gets stronger the more work it. Work. That's what, I'm doing. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Mm -hmm. work, work your faith. Yeah. Add work to your faith. You see some muscles. So muscle of faith grow on your body, on your spirit, on your mind, your conscience. Muscle builds up in them here. You become strong through the trials, the tests, whatever come. Your muscle of faith, pop it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray this morning that God would, would increase our faith, yes, but also yeah. that he would show us what works we need to start adding to our faith. Amen. Yeah. Father, we come before you this morning so thankful for your word that has ministered to us. Your word that has encouraged us, inspired us, educated us. Father, we receive all of this into our hearts, into our minds. We receive the seed of your word. And Father, we receive it with meekness, knowing that it's going to grow and produce change, produce spiritual growth, transformation. Renew our minds concerning faith today to come into alignment with how you view faith, Father. Father, increase our faith that we would grow in faith through this process of practicing faith and show us, Father, what works we need to add to our faith. You know where my brothers and sisters are struggling. You know where they need you to move in their lives. You know what we need to learn how to overcome in our own lives, our circumstances. Father, I ask that you would speak to each one of us through our conscience, through our intuition, order our steps, Father, to show us exactly what practical works we need to be putting forth, mixing together with our faith, God, that you would look at our lives and you would account it unto us as righteousness, even as you did Abraham. Let us receive this word into our hearts and our minds, God, that your work, that your miraculous, powerful, supernatural work would be done in and through every single one of us. And we thank you, oh God, for this word this morning. And we receive it by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, shall it all be done for your glory, Father. Amen. Amen.